Let us consider a body centered cubic lattice. This lattice is generated by a conventional unit cell as shown here. This unit cell has lattice points at the corners as well as one at the body center. But note that when we say BCC lattice, we mean the points generated by the repetition of this unit cell and not the unit cell itself. For a given lattice, there are infinitely many unit cells. The conventional unit cell is only one of them. In the case of BCC, this conventional unit cell is a non-primitive one because it has an additional lattice point in the center apart from those at the corners. In a primitive unit cell, the lattice points are located only at the corners. For some application, for example in the determination of reciprocal lattice, it is useful to work with a primitive unit cell. Again, there are infinitely many primitive unit cells possible for a given lattice. In this video, we describe one such primitive cell associated with BCC lattice. Let us select our first primitive basis vector, the vector from center to one of the corners from the center to one of these corners. We call it A1. Similarly, we select our vectors A2 and A3 again from center to these corners. These three primitive basis vectors span a primitive unit cell for the BCC lattice. Let me try to show you this by completing the unit cell. You have to pay particular attention as we have to use three points outside this unit cell. Let me add vectors a1 and a2. a1 and a2. You get to a point which is the body center of a unit cell which is on the top of the given cube. So this point, I have not drawn the full cube on the top but you can see, you can imagine that there is a cube sitting on the top face of this cube and this point is the center of that cube. You can convince yourself. Similarly, by adding A2 and A3, we come to a point which is at the body center of a unit cell in the front of the given cube. And Finally, adding A3 and A1, we arrive at a point which is at the body center of a unit cell to the right of the given cube. You can now see three parallelograms. You can now see three parallelograms meeting at the body center. These are the three faces of the primitive unit cell. Also, we have seven points of the primitive unit cell. One is this the body center point and then three corners of the original cube and then three body centers of the cube adjacent to this given cube. So seven points. You know that a parallelopiped unit cell consists of eight points just like the original cube. So one more point is required to complete this unit cell and that is this corner of the cube. If we now connect this point, we get a complete picture of the primitive unit cell. It is useful to express the primitive basis vectors A1, A2 and A3 in terms of the orthogonal basis vectors E1 E2 and E3 shown in green here. These are unit vectors along the edges of the original cube. So I want to express A1 in terms of E1, E2 and E3. To do this, let me start at the tail of the A1 vector, which is the body center, and take a step A by 2 in minus E1 direction. E1 is this edge. I am starting from here. 
and taking a step a by 2 in the minus e1 direction. You can convince yourself that you will reach the center of the back face. Then I take a step a by 2 along e2 and that will bring me to the middle of this vertical edge. And finally, we take a step a by 2 in the e3 direction to arrive at the head of the vector a1. So, I can construct this vector a1 in terms of these three steps along e1, e2 and e3. So, the a1 vector can be expressed as minus a by 2 e1 plus a by 2 e2 plus a by 2 e3. Taking a by 2 common, I can also write it as a by 2 times minus e1 plus e2 plus e3. Similarly, we can write a2 as a by 2 e1 minus e2 plus e3 and a3 as a by 2 e1 plus e2 minus e3. Note the convention we are using here. If, if we travel in the negative e1 direction, I am labeling that vector as a1. If we travel in the negative e2 direction, I am labeling that vector as a2 and if we move in the negative e3 direction, the vector is called a3. Note that the three vectors a1, a2 and a3, a1, a2 and a3 are all of equal length and equal to half the body diagonal of the cube, original cube. So we can write the length of a1 equal to length of a2 is equal to length of a3 is equal to half the body diagonal. Body diagonal is root 3 times a where a is the lattice parameter of the original cube. Half of that is the edges of my primitive unit self. And the angle between these vectors, alpha, beta and gamma, the interaxial angle between a1, a2, a2, a3 and a1, a3, each of these angles are also equal and can be easily found by taking the dot products and we find that it is equal to cos inverse minus 1 by 3 that is 109.5 degrees. It is of interest to find the volume of this primitive unit cell. The primitive unit cell as we have seen is spanned by the vectors a1, a2 and a3 and this is a parallelopiped. Volume of any parallelopiped is given as a triple scalar product of the edge of vectors. So Vp, the primitive unit cell volume, is a1 dot a2 cross a3. This triple scalar product can also be written as a determinant where the first row is row components of the vector a1, the second row is components of the vector a2, and the third row are the components of the vector a3. If we solve this determinant, we get the simple answer of a cube by 2, which if you note, it's simply half the volume of the original cube. Vc is the volume of the conventional unit cell. So the volume of the primitive unit cell is half the volume of the conventional cell. This result could have been easily arrived by simply looking at the number of lattice points belonging to each of these unit cells. So let us look at the number of lattice point, effective number of lattice point belonging to the conventional unit cell. Now conventional unit cell consists of eight corners and one body center. The corner lattice points are shared by eight cubes. So effectively only one eighth of each lattice point belongs to a given cube. So we have the effective number of lattice point in the conventional unit cell as 8 by 1 by 8, 8 into 1 by 8 for the corners and plus 1 that is the one in the body center which is not shared and totally belongs to the conventional unit cell. 
So this number NC comes out to be 2. If we calculate the effective number of lattice points in the primitive unit cell, primitive unit cell by definition and by our construction was having lattice points only at its corners. And there are eight corners and each corner will be shared by eight such unit cells. So again, you get a value NP, which is simply one. And the ratio of the volumes of any two unit cell is equal to the ratio of the volume, the ratio of numbers of lattice point contained in those unit cells. So that's why VC by VP is simply NC by NP. And from our estimation here, this ratio is two. So we get the same result that VC is two times VP, which we got here. Thank you.